wonderful opportunity now. You all know Roz. Hello, Roz, our licensed Unity teacher and leader of the Unity National School, who's doing a wonderful job for us as Unity comes together in Australia. Welcome to Melbourne, Roz. Thank you. Feels like I'm there with you. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for the wonderful way of starting this day with the, the dance saying yes there's a there's a great prayer I heard about when you go walking if you just every time you put down your left foot go yes saying yes to the universe David McClure gave that one so that was beautiful beautiful reading daily word thank you very much Sheila that was awesome and it was like ah oh, well that's my talk that's it it's it's all wrapped up in mm. that and interesting i didn't um know what the daily word was when i was thinking it and actually wrote my talk out um, some time ago actually it's from like two o'clock in the morning or something i do these crazy things i wake up in the middle of the night and and write a talk or write an assignment or do something like that uh, so w w when i saw what the daily word was i was like oh how perfect is that? It all fits so well. So expectation, you know, when you look up that word, um, it comes from the Latin, which means awaiting. So no great surprise there. We all know about expectation. But what really surprised me, what was written right after that. So let me just read it to make sure that I get it. As it says, it says, if you have great expectations, you think something good, will come your way. But if you keep your expectations low, you won't risk being disappointed. You won't risk being disappointed. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, fancy putting that, you know, in, in with the definition of expectation. And I, what it caused me to think about was, I wonder how much that is wired into our subconscious way of looking at life. You know, when I put expect the dot 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 what came to mind expect the best presumably did anyone go oh no expect the worst <laughs> probably not <laughs> so we all go oh expect the best but underneath it there's something i reckon going on about not wanting to risk being disappointed you know, we think about the politicians, they promise us great things, but then sometimes don't deliver in that great expectation. And we go, well, what, well, what can you expect? They're politicians or it's the system. Does anyone else have those thoughts or is that just, a, is that kind of just my way of thinking about? It? So it, it did make me think that maybe we've got something running, you know, that race consciousness that Charles Fillmore talked about, that those unconscious beliefs that we have that are running things, um, even though consciously no one would want to go, well, I expect the worst, of course. No, we, we want to expect the best. So I think our challenge was, is how do we keep that expectation up how do we keep it going i did a talk for a, a retired group a retired business owners group so you know these were people who'd had these amazing businesses and so there was you know they were they were pretty on to it and i thought i did a good talk you know and i thought it was inspirational and uh, <laughs> uh, and that i was giving them telling them the kind of the truth teachings that i had used to get myself out of debt and out of a miserable situation um, and so after the talk one of these business owners came up to me and said but what happens you know for someone who's now on a pension and i said well their principles you know their universal laws they will still work regardless of what your situation is and she pats me on the hand you know that that kind of way of going there there dear you've got to be realistic she said I was thinking wow it was as if all this stuff I talked about just went whoosh as if it had no basis in reality 
as if I was talking pie in the sky, Pollyanna-ish stuff. So, you know, it's like, and I, you know, I know that's not the case for you because you, you're working with this stuff every week. But it did make me think about, so is that something that's running underneath things? That when we have a dream, you know, they're talking about these dreams, you know, the Fillmore's dream of building unity. Just think about that, the faith that they had. It's the month of faith. We're not talking about 12 powers, I know. Phil, I won't go there. But they, you know, the faith that they had, but the work that they did to bring it about. And I think the, the bit in the, you know, the dream, when we have a dream, how do we bring that to fulfillment? So I was thinking about the journey that I've been on these last, um, well, going back to when we moved to the States in 2004 and I got involved with the Unity Center there, which, you know, out of the blue, it just happened to be 10 minutes away from where we lived. Isn't that wonderful synchronicity in the state that's so huge, you could drive six hours to get somewhere. Um, and there it was. So I was involved with the Unity Group and they, they were doing a prosperity class, um, Keys to the Kingdom, some of you may know it. Uh, and in about the third class of that, so this is in 2005, we had to visualize how we'd like our life to be. What would we really love to see coming into our existence? And this thought, this idea flashed across my mind. I mean, it was just like, you know, ideas are like slippery fish if you don't gaff them on the end. I think it was Napoleon Hill who said this or Earl Nightingale. If you don't gaff them on the end of the hook, they go and they're gone. So part of this was we had to visualize what we want and then write it down. It was a real key, write it down. So this thought flashed across my mind. I would love to have a center back in New Zealand when we moved back there. I had no idea when we were moving back. So, you know, and I, so I was starting to see this huge center, you know, would have massage, you would have um, yoga classes, it would have this huge cafe dining area, it would have a, maybe a labyrinth, a pool where you could sit and meditate, um, community gardens. So, so I had to, you know, so I was thinking, oh, a big block of land and all this great stuff happening on it. Well, it, it, this kind of grabbed me. And so every day, and so what we were encouraged to do is every day write it out and start filling out the details. So, so I don't know when we're going back to New Zealand, but I, I keep working with this idea. This is what it might look like. It would be on this bit of land. And it just kept bubbling away inside me and it, with excitement. So what happens? So you get an idea. So just make sure, you know, that I'm, I'm just not talking about my thing because it's happened. I want it to be, this is how you bring a dream into fruition. This is how you bring a dream to, to manifestation, whatever it is, whatever area of life it is. You work with it every day. Because if you have that idea, First of all, if it just slips by, then it's gone. So you capture it, and then it's like a brand new baby. What do you do with a baby? You need to feed it, right? You need to nurture it. Do you do that just once a week, once a month? Just occasionally when you come on? No, so you do it every day, right? So you're working with it every day, every day, even though you can't see how it might come about. And, you know, you've been around Unity long enough, you know, how is none of our business. So you have the dream, you have this, this thing, you say, okay, so what, what is it that I can do? This is a great phrase to think about. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. In 2 Corinthians, now let me just have a look so I can get this exactly how it's written. Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians. 
and it comes from chapter eight and it's verses 10 to 11, if you want to look it up. And he says, in, and in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, he says, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. So you see where do what you can with what you have from where you are comes in. So you don't go, you know, if you've got a big dream of, as I did, you know, having a center, you don't go and get terribly in debt trying to get it. You have a dream about have getting into, you know, some field of work. You don't, you don't go beyond your means. You do what you can with what you have from where you are. So when I was thinking about this, so what could I do? We were living in the States. We weren't back in New Zealand. I wasn't really in a position to go buying land. But an idea comes. This is the way the universe works, isn't it? You start with it and then you get an idea. Ideas are our currency, if you like. And the idea I had was, oh, I need a credential to come back, to bring back to New Zealand. And that's what set me on the path of finishing getting my licensed Unity teacher done, getting that um, qualification, because that felt like that would be something I could bring back and um, have, have that as, a, as my backing. And so we're in the States. Where's Unity Village? It's in the States. And I'd always wanted to go there. I'd always dreamed that that would be a wonderful thing to do. And here it was within within reach, it seemed to me, everyone at, um, in Maine, we were in Maine, uh, everyone at the center there was saying, oh, but it's such a long way to go out to Kansas City. You know, it takes two, two plane rides, it takes all day to get there. And I'm thinking, that's all it takes? That's much better than 36 hours <laughs> sitting in long haul planes and costing thousands. So for me, it was like, wow, this is absolutely doable. So I did that for seven years. For seven years, every summer, I went out to Unity Village to study and finished my SEE and, and qualified as a licensed Unity teacher in 2011. So then what next? We came back to New Zealand in, in, to, in 2014 and I started looking around. So where was the center going to be? Where should I set, it, set up? Again, an idea comes. There was a woman's name on the back of Daily Word who was the contact for where I live in New Zealand, in the Wellington region. And she, she actually happened to be someone that my husband had known for years, for 30 years or something. I think we might have lost our connection to Roz. Just give it a minute. It might she might come back on. Everybody, just yeah. just bear with us, please. 